focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to Decoding Business Growth. I'm Sumera Abdi. This week, we take a close look at a fundamentally strong company that's based out of Chennai. It's Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance. This company is part of the multifarious Murugappa Group, which is now into its fourth generation. Over the last three decades, Chola Mandalam has managed to carve out a strong niche for itself, both in the vehicle finance space as well as the home loan segment, to emerge as a leading NBFC player with a pan-India presence. But what sets Chola Mandalam apart is that it's not out to bankroll people. It's being selective in its own way. Let me explain. The management of the company, what they have done is pick a niche in the vehicle and the home loan segments where the banks have not been able to penetrate for various reasons. And it is this focus strategy that has paid off big time. Its top line and bottom line have been growing at a strong clip year after year. So here's a look at the Chola Mandalam story. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> we've met, remember? <laughs> now do you remember? <laughs> Chola from Murgappa? Yes. My one truck, now three. Huh? Thanks, Chola Finance. My life changed. Hey, Pali, ek plate jalebi le aayi hai. In a sense, the general public was not aware that the 115-year-old Murugappa Group has over 28 businesses, including 11 listed companies. So, with a view to create awareness about how the group was touching the common man's lives every day, without them actually realizing it, the Murugappa Group unveiled a high decibel TV campaign in 2012, and that ad campaign, Bet We Have Met, had the desired impact. As the ad depicts, Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance is part of the prestigious Murugappa Group that provides vehicle finance, home loans, SME loans, investment advisory and stockbroking services through a network of 534 branches and 32,000 employees across the country. Currently, it has over 25,000 crore rupee assets under management, of which 70% constitute vehicle financing and 30% constitute home loans. So how did it all begin? The promoters hail from Chetiar community, who traditionally are into financial services business. So it was not surprising that M.A. Alagappan did likewise in 1978 by setting up Chola Mandalam as an equipment financing company. But there was an issue over tax interpretation of equipment leasing and this saw the management shift its entire focus to vehicle finance in 1993-94. There were no regrets. Today, Chola finances all kinds of vehicles. It apportions 26% to light commercial vehicles, 13% to heavy commercial vehicles, 15% to cars and multi-utility vehicles, 10% to tractors, 8% to two and three wheelers, and 15% to refinance and pre-owned vehicles, and the balance to residual businesses. In 1978, actually, we started off uh, in the equipment financing business, uh, plant and machinery, and basically we used to lease from plant and machinery. Uh, then after a while, leasing actually became unviable as a business from a tax perspective. So uh, we began to look at different opportunities to grow. One was hypothecation of plant and machinery in itself. And then soon that, that gave way to getting into the trucking business or uh, basically beginning to finance what we started off as cars and MUVs to start with and then trucks over time. Currently at Chola, we finance both secondhand trucks and new trucks. Our current business mix is about 70% new and 30% used. And uh, we find both to be good businesses to be in. We do trucks that are, you know, just come off straight off a lease, which we refinance, and we do older trucks that are six plus years old. Our primary business, though, still continues to be new trucks, where we go across the spectrum from mini lights to heavy commercial vehicles. Even as the business was growing, the management went that extra mile to stoke the spirit of entrepreneurship among truck drivers. Thus, many drivers became fleet owners thanks to funding by Chola. It is this value creation, coupled with financing new and pre-owned vehicles, that has helped Chola Mandalam become a leading NBFC player in India. Sample this, the number of vehicles funded by Chola has grown from 69,814 units in FY 2010 to 2,4354 units in FY 2015. 
the company, which has over 7.5 lakh customers, is adding 15,000 newer ones every month. It is betting big on this segment as nearly 70% or 17,638 crore rupees of its total assets under management are deployed into vehicle financing. To insulate its business further, Chola entered the home loan segment in 2006 and this yielded rich dividends for the company. In the first year, it disbursed 318 crore rupees. Today, this segment constitutes nearly 30% or 7,280 crore rupees of its total assets under management. To keep customers delighted, Chola entered newer and newer arenas like mutual funds, gold loans and consumer finance. But not all forays proved lucrative, so it exited its consumer finance joint venture with DBS Bank of Singapore. In all this, the management has not taken its eye off the main line of its business. Today, Chola has emerged as a primary financial services provider in the rural and semi-urban pockets as 70% of Chola Mandalam's 534 branches are located in rural areas, 20% have a semi-urban focus while 10% are urban-centric. There is a bit of a saturation on the urban market in the sense because urban market, uh, uh, urban market borrowers are more credit savvy. Right now their, their needs are being satisfied by banks and other uh, financiers who are more, uh, who are able to give loans at much finer rates. Hence uh, the urban market customers will get saturated over a period of time. For the segments we are working on, but we will always keep finding newer segments to work on. Like today, we are working on SME loans for in urban markets, which are uh, which are for customers who do not get credit from banks. So there are there are certain segments in the urban market which we will continue to work on, and the rural market from a vehicle finance perspective is booming with the better roads being built into into the interiors, and availability of smaller and better transport facilities being uh, uh, able to reach out into the hinterland. The demand for vehicle finance in the rural markets will continue to grow and we will keep leveraging that demand. Unlike other NBFCs, Chola has concentrated on certain segments for its business. For instance, two-thirds of its vehicle finance portfolio comprises small fleet operators and in the case of home loans, the entire portfolio is self-employed individuals. Both these markets have the typical characteristics of low ticket size, cash transactions, limited credit history and volatile cash flows which makes it difficult for banks to address. We actually engage the customer far ahead of when banks usually do. You know, I often joke that no business happens in our branches. That's because all of our business happens in the field, right? Basically all of our field forces that sit in the branches are out every day engaging with customers, talking about what their needs are. And getting in front of those customers and showing them that we really want to service them uh, in a way that is much more proactive than banks usually do is what gives us that edge. And another reason is that basically over time we've been able to develop much stronger relationships with the channels. So if you think of dealerships, car dealerships, they know that NBFCs want to work much harder to get their business. And as a result, right, they've, we've always enjoyed a strong relationship with them and they support us in our growth. A similar situation exists in home equity as well, where we've developed very strong relationships both with the channel and with end customers that basically keeps them coming back. Besides the Smart Segmentation Trust, it has also invested heavily in technology. And this strategy has worked well for the company. Its net interest income has shot up from 529 crore rupees in FY 2008 to 3,253 crore rupees in FY 2015, registering a CAGR of 30%. Profits during the same period grew from 59 crore rupees to 435 crore rupees, recording a CAGR of 33%. It has managed to maintain net interest margins in the range of 7% to 8.8% between FY 2008 to FY 2015. On that note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18's Sumaira Abdi talks to Ajay Saraf of ICIC Securities to decode Chola Mandalam's success story. Stay tuned.
welcome back. The shareholders of Chola Mandalam have every reason to be happy. Not only as stock prices almost doubled in the last one year, but they have received consistent dividends from the company. Samira so Abdi caught up with Ajay Saraf of ICSA Securities to get a markets expert on Chola. So this time around, Chola Mandalam Investment. You know, this is a space, the NBFC space, which has a lot of successful companies. So what is it that made you choose Chola Mandalam Investment? What is it that, you know, stands out about the company? Chola Mandalam Finance, as you know, you know, pedigree, you know, is part of the Murugappa Group, uh, rupees 243 billion conglomerate with 28 businesses and nine listed entities. So that kind of makes it, uh, you know, a part of the pedigree is obviously stands out. Uh, they're a very strong management team uh, led by its MD, Mr. Subhaya. Uh, it's uh, delivered uh, consistent growth and profitability across all critical financial parameters. And it has a right uh, di diversified business mix, uh, mix uh, uh, over the CV business and the mortgage uh, business. You know, one of the things you said that uh, it's the pedigree that stood out for you, right? right. So it's a family-run business. Right. Um, do you think that is what has worked in their favor? I mean, how would you rate their management style vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, something which would be a professionally-run company? Right. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a family-run business. Um, it's uh, it's headed by, I said, uh, Mr. Subeya, who's uh, from the family, but he's been the key to uh, to transform Chola Madlam Finance over the last few, few years. Although the businesses themselves are run by very capable uh, professionals. And also, if you see it's, uh, you know, the company has invested quite a lot to be a technology-driven company. And it runs its businesses through over 500 branches, which it has set up yeah. across India. So I would think, uh, you know, it has a right mix of uh, the family and the professional setup. As an investment banker now, what do you think of the kind of stock market returns? You know, they've been giving uh, dividends consistently. This is a stock that has doubled in the last one year. Sure. How would you rate their performance in the market? They've done uh, extremely well. If you look at it, uh, double, as you said, doubled um, their, and the, so the shareholders are extremely happy. And what it does is that if they have to go back to the market uh, for the growth, so capital won't be a constraint because they've delivered that, uh, you know, a good set of numbers, a diversified set of uh, businesses, a good management. So I think uh, overall it has done pretty well for the market. So, you know, this is a company, uh, they've been adding businesses. Uh, they've also chosen to exit a few businesses. So what do you say uh, this nimble footedness has sort of worked in their favor? Do you think this is an advantage that they have that they're not really emotional about their business? Absolutely. They have been uh, extremely nimble-footed uh, and uh, then they've been quick to react to the market realities. Uh, if you look at it, they exited the personal loan business and they scaled down their small business loan and they focused on the more secured uh, CV and the mortgage businesses, mm -hmm. which they have grown through the technology-driven initiatives. And that's, uh, you know, that's a pretty, uh, you know, which, which is very good for them. So, and then also they're part of a very reputed Murgappa group, right? They are kind of focused on the businesses they are in, but they're also focused on the bottom line and which has driven the transformation in Chola Mandalam Finance. You know, another thing I wanted to talk about is the kind of geographical focus that they have, which is mostly in the rural or the semi-urban areas. Now with a lot more companies entering this space, do you think they'll be able to defend their turf and even manage some growth? The company has uh, set up uh, this 500 odd uh, branches that have grown well under that. They've also differentiated themselves through some unique uh, uh, initiatives, which has worked well for them. And they've earned trust over the years. And they are part of, as I said, Murgappa Group, so a very strong brand. So with all these, I don't see why they can't hold uh, on their own against uh, competition and move ahead. All right, time now for their SWOT analysis. So what do you think would be their key challenges going ahead? As well, what will be the growth drivers that will take them into the next leg of growth? They have uh, grown extremely well uh, over the last few years. Uh, and so the key would be to maintain the asset quality. So they have uh, delivered, uh, you know, consistent uh, growth in both in the book and also on the profitability, mm -hmm. and they need to maintain that. Also, what has happened is they have rationalized a lot of branches last two years, mm -hmm. and fruits of that would uh, be, you know, seen in the, in the coming months. So that's very important, uh, and, mm -hmm. and they also well capitalized. 
you will see it's it's uh, capital adequacy is pretty good uh, they have a very a great set of investors uh, and they have been able to raise money at uh, at regular interval the promoter holding is comfortable so dilution is not an issue and they have given a consistent return to shareholders over over the last few years so going back to capital market again is not an issue so in short uh, they have all the levers to deliver consistent growth in the coming years all right mr saraf thanks so much for being with us Well, that was Ajay Saraf's take on Chola. On that note, it's time for another short break. When we come back, we look at the road ahead for the company. Stay tuned. Welcome back. The management's nimble-footedness is reflected in its strong financials, and this has made it a darling among private equity players. like Norwest Venture Partners, Amansa Capital, IFC, Creator, Aquarius Investment Advisors and Apex Partners. These players collectively hold 21.45% stake in Chola. So Myra Abdi caught up with Shashank Singh of Apex Partners India to understand why they invested in Chola Mandalam. Shashank Singh from Apex Partners India now joins in. Mr Singh, thanks very much for speaking with us. First up, what is it that prompted this interest in Chola Mandalam Invest and Finance from your side? What made you invest in this company? So, we were spending a lot of time looking at the financial services space in India as a potential investment uh, destination. Um and we identified NBFCs as an area that we wanted to focus on. and within nbfcs we looked at uh, specific companies that had developed strong niches and uh, defensible market positions in those niches and chola was one of those companies that we identified and the more work we did into this space and into into the company specifically uh, the more we liked so chola specifically has a very strong position in commercial vehicle finance um lights and small commercial vehicles and an emerging business in home equity and when we did research into the group the murgappa group which is a extremely well known group in india and uh, very well respected we decided that this was a group that we wanted to partner with specifically for their culture of transparency uh, high corporate governance and integrity you know chola mandalam investment has now become a force to reckon with what would you attribute its success to chola um, combines two attributes that we found extremely attractive uh, the first was the fact that it has grown um, quite remarkably over the last 4 uh, to 5 years prior to our investment in fact net income grew from about 10 million dollars in 2010 to about uh, 60 to 65 million dollars uh, last year uh with very fast um uh, growth of of the loan book and assets under management which was uh which was fantastic but equally uh they did this and they grew very rapidly uh, while maintaining very strong credit quality and in fact this piece has come through um very strongly in the last year uh, as they've managed to maintain a focus on on collections and on uh, containing credit costs while some of their uh, competitor group has stumbled Okay so if you were to do a peer comparison where do you think Chola Mandalam would stand As I mentioned um the 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 market as as we all know the the macro economy has been slow uh, industrial production uh, has been slow uh, and so in this environment uh, what separates the strong performers from the average performers has been the ability to really focus on collections and on credit costs and this has been our experience over the last year that we've invested that chola has maintained this focus uh, very strongly and has therefore demonstrated good performance to the market you know uh, this is a company that has been consistently paying dividends their stock has been on a roll on the roi parameters this company has more than fulfilled their obligations do you think this is the kind of run rate that they can sustain as i said um, th- there is a there's a good focus on collections and and credit costs uh and this is uh something that we laud i think as the macro economy uh macro economic growth comes back uh um, the the focus will shift um back towards uh growth of loan book uh in this segment and so we will uh, we we are hopeful of uh, continued strong growth uh, uh in the company all right then so would you look at investing more money into the company 
Absolutely. If we get the opportunity to, we would love to. Mr. Singh, thank you so much. Pleasure speaking with you. To reduce delinquency rate and operations costs, the management has invested heavily in technology. It has roped in Cognizant to digitally transform its vehicle finance business. Starting from loan origination to recoveries, reducing operations costs to improving business agility and customer experiences, these are the areas Cognizant is focusing on. Investing in technology and ensuring that we basically have the most cutting-edge technology in the business I think is a base requirement for competition. As a matter of fact, the companies that do it well basically are going to be the ones that win in the future. And so for us, uh, investing in technology is something that we see as extremely important. We'll, we'll continue to do and have done over the past five years. Uh, I constantly you know, push both uh, the team and myself on that front. I don't think we're doing enough. I don't think we're innovating enough as a company. But unless we start doing this more and more, uh, I do think that long-term survival for all of us is at risk. So my dream for Chola is basically to make Chola into one of the top five financial institutions in the country. I do believe that it is a dream that we can definitely achieve. Uh, we have to look at a realistic time frame for it. But I do think the opportunity for financial services in India is extremely big. And given Chola and where we're headed, I definitely think there's an opportunity for us to be one of the top five financial services player in this, uh, players in this country over time. Chola Mandalam is all set to move on to the next level as the commercial vehicle segment is on the cusp of revival. It has also recently applied for the payment bank license and ventured into SME loans. With the Indian economy slated to grow at a faster clip, the management's dream of becoming one of the top five players seems easily attainable. Well, the management have set their targets pretty high. They want to become one of the top five institutions in the country. Not an impossible task if one looks at the way the management is investing in technology to improve their overall efficiency so as to keep delighting their shareholders. The management does seem very committed. So on that note, it's time to say goodbye. We'll see you again next week with another interesting story. Till then, keep watching CNBC TV 18.